How's it going, Eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you a cool tool that you're probably gonna to wanna to buy if you do small engine repair. So, with that being said, let's get right into it. So, we're in the shop today working on this Husqvarna YTH 24V48LS. So, it's a 24 horsepower, 48 inch cut. And my customer said that while he was cutting, all of a sudden he just lost all power on the mower deck. He dropped it off, he said, figure it out. And I diagnosed it as a completely blown electric PTO clutch. So on the workbench here is the original PTO clutch that we removed off of this riding mower. It is an Ogura and the part number is a 400008. So when I entered that into Stens, I ended up getting an Extreme PTO clutch replacement number. I've been using Extreme equipment, high performance electric PTO clutches for a long time now. Ever since I've been with Stens and I've never had one fail, they use heavy duty bearings, they're built very well, and they're also much cheaper, sometimes even 50% less than the OEM ones. The part number for this is an X0569. Now I do have a couple different videos on testing and adjusting electric PTO clutches. Uh, the first one would be just a basic resistance test. So you're gonna take a multimeter and you're going to be testing the resistance of the copper winding inside of there. You want the reading to be anywhere between two to four ohms of resistance. And just to quickly explain the way that a PTO clutch works is, like I said, it has those copper windings in there and then it has one of these plugs. So when you pop your PTO switch to engage the mower blades, what ends up happening is electrical current is sent to the winding. It engages an electromagnet and it pulls this pulley down here, which is attached to your mower deck belt up, making connection with the rotating crankshaft of the engine. And then that's how you transfer power from the engine down to your mower deck. Now you are going to notice on some PTO clutches you're going to have this spring and nut as well as these access ports here and what you can do is actually measure the distance it's called the armature air gap between the plate that is hooked up to the pulley and the plate up here that's attached to the magnet and you want to set that generally it's around 14 to 20 thousandths of an inch normally I set them at around 16 thousandths of an inch and that works pretty good but depending on the engine size and the brand of electric PTO clutch there is going to be a a couple different tolerances so you'll want to check that video out on how to adjust a PTO clutch I can link that in the top right of your screen as well as in the description down below now whenever a customer has a PTO clutch issue one of the quickest ways for me to diagnose is I disconnect this connector here that goes down to the PTO clutch from the riding lawnmowers electrical wiring harness. And then what we do is we just supply 12 volts directly to the PTO clutch after we've properly adjusted the armature air gap and the magnet simply did not work. Now in today's world, to rebuild these ends up being more costly than just going and purchasing an aftermarket one. So I called my customer, said I can have the extreme PTO clutch here the very next day. My customer said, okay, but I got the camera out today for a very specific reason. And today we're going to be focusing on these connectors and more specifically how to remove them so as you can see i have already cut off this electrical connector here and the reason is this thing is absolutely toast it smells like it's burnt and it's just completely garbage so this is going directly into the scrap pile however these electrical connections and the wiring harnesses are always good for me to save because a lot of riding mowers these days, depending on the brand and the company that makes them, will use a different style connector. So this one has what I would call a female plastic connector with female electrical pins inside of it. And just to grab a shot of it, the PTO clutch has already been installed. I have not torqued it yet because I am running into this connector issue. So I'll try to get a focus here so you guys can see on the PTO clutch itself, we have a female plastic connector with the male pin connectors inside of it. On the riding mower, however, this one has what I would call a male plastic connector with the male pin connectors inside of it. So you can already see where we're going with this. The female with the male does not hook up with the male to the male. Now, Extreme is kind enough to send you one of these, which is the male plastic connector with the female pins inside of it. However, the other end goes back to the old school, what I would call the Warner PTO clutch connector there. And you know, like I said, you're gonna be running into this all the time. So I have a tool that I wanna show you guys that makes it super simple 
to unplug these wires so you can just swap over these connectors. So what I did was I went to Amazon. This is a pin disconnector. There's all different sizes, but what we're gonna be focusing on today are the tubular ones here. And basically what this does is it allows me to go inside of the plastic housing there, push down the little metal anchors that these pins use. I'll try to rotate this around so you guys can see that because the way these work is they have tiny little metal anchors on there and when they push into that plastic plug they essentially lock themselves into position. Now you guys can see I already have one removed and this tool is incredibly simple to use. All you do is take this tube there and you put it into the connector and you push down and then you pull on the wire and that tube, like I says, pushes down on those metal anchors and allows you to pull the connector right out. So what I'm gonna do is just press down on the tube there and give this a pull and it pops it right out. So now I have basically a couple options. This PTO, the new one, has, like I said, the female connector with the male pins and this one had the male connector with the male pins. So as you can imagine, it doesn't matter what connector I use, male pins will not go to male pins. So I could cut these off and then install female pins However, I don't have those female connectors here. I could order them, but there'll be a couple days. What I do have, however, is this little adapter that came with the Extreme PTO clutch. So it has the male connector. However, it has the female pins inside of it. But on the other side, it has the old style Warner PTO clutch hookup. And unfortunately, this one didn't have that. So. I have a couple different options here. I can cut this off because I don't need that. And then I can cut these off, strip the wires and run a butt connector. And then what I can do is cover it with heat shrink so that it's weatherproof. And then that'll plug it right into that. But this might come in handy one day. So I wanna try to save that. And like I said, I always cut the old harnesses off of the old PTO clutch. There's nothing wrong with this. I've already resistance tested it. Everything works good. But going back to why this is so important to have, check this out. This has the female pins that I need, but it also has the female connector. So again, female won't go to female. So using this kit here, I can uninstall this female connector and then I can install my male connector to it and then go ahead and butt connect that together and that's it. I can get this back to my customer. And like you saw earlier, you just push that tube remover in, pull this out. I just pop this thing out in a couple of seconds. It's literally that simple. $17 on Amazon Canada, might be cheaper in the US. It was prime next day. So if you ordered one, you'd have it in the very next day. Like I said, I ordered that in 2020. I've probably only used it two or three times, but well worth the money to have something like that so that I can swap out plastic connectors whenever I need. And then essentially once you have it removed, you just wanna reset the barbs. So you just spread them out a bit and then you literally just plug them back in to the point where I now have the male connector on the lead here with the female little pins there. And now it is nice and tight, that's not coming out. So within a very short period of time, you can swap over your connectors to the point where now my new PTO clutch lead hooks up to the old PTO clutch lead. And then, like I said, I'm just gonna snip those off and then do a butt connector here. And then I can tuck this lead away. And whenever this PTO clutch has to be removed in the future, for whatever reason, I'll be able to disconnect it with the factory plug, simple as that. And I just wanted to briefly include this before we wrap up today's video. If you do want the PTO clutch with the extra wiring stuff, then you're gonna order the same part number, but with a dash K, and I believe that stands for kit. So it includes like a wiring kit. And like I said, you're gonna get a whole bunch of extra stuff that you're probably going to have to wire in anyways. So for a savings of, I believe 23 or $24, you can get just the PTO clutch by itself and then wire it up with the connectors you already have. So I have a 127 piece heat shrink tubing kit here. This is from Power Fist, which is from Princess Auto. Basically it's the Canadian version of Harbor Freight. And just a little pro tip, always put your heat shrink tubing over your wiring before you do your butt connectors or anything else. But before I install anything, I'm just making sure that the heat shrink tubing goes over my butt connectors that I'll be using and that the wiring fits into both sides of the butt connector. 
So I got one side crimped up. Go ahead and give that a pull. Make sure that it does not come off. So that's tight. I can now put my heat shrinking over that. Uh, I did want to mention though, there is going to be a black and a red wire, which indicates a positive and a negative. A lot of times what's going to be more common nowadays is you're going to see these PTO clutches with wiring harnesses that are the same color wires. So there is no red or black, which means there is no positive or negative unless it is specified on the connector itself. And that is going to be because the PTO clutches are non-polarized, which means you can hook up the negative or the positive from the wiring harness on the riding mower to whichever side, it does not matter. So now my butt connectors are nice and secure. I can go ahead and hit it with the heat gun. Like I said, that'll protect those connections there that we did with the butt connectors from the elements. And then before I plug the connectors in and kind of zip tie and keep all the wires out of the way. What I'm going to be using is a little bit of dielectric grease from Permatex there, and that will keep these connections in the plug from corroding and uh, ensure that we get a good connection there. And I'll probably just end up putting it into that one there. So I now have the wiring harness zip tied around this big loom here. That's how everything was from the factory. So that's how it's going back. And then I used a little bit of dielectric grease on the PTO connector there so that I can plug that back into the PTO switch, turn the key, pop the switch, and we should hear the PTO clutch engage. So we'll turn the key on. I could hear the fuel solenoid click. We'll pop the PTO switch. PTO is engaging. Everything should be working as intended. Now, before wrapping up the video, I did want to include this important final step, step 15 on the extreme PTO clutch instructions. It says you have to burnish the clutch. Basically what that means is you're gonna start the engine, run it down to half throttle, and then you are going to engage and disengage the PTO clutch 10 times with the blades spinning up to full speed each time. Then you're gonna shut it off, let everything cool down, double check your torque specs, and that's it. The riding mower is ready to be returned back to the customer. And if you guys are wondering what these fork style tools here do, I'll put some photos up on screen. Basically, those are designed to remove square, rectangular, or flat pins from the plastic connectors. And you can see the photos on screen showing that. So like I said, for about $17, this is a great toolkit to have in your collection if you're working on small engines. I don't use them that often, but you never know when these are gonna come in handy. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Like I said, that tool, probably a lot of people don't know about. You go in with those pin disconnectors and it's super simple. You can pull the wire out and swap over a connector pretty much on any electrical connector that you could imagine on these riding lawnmowers to get your equipment back up and running again. So with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.